Skyrim is one of the most modded games in existence, and that means thousands of modders have poured their souls out trying to make every aspect of this 14 year old game look like it was created in 2030. And in this video, I'm going to embrace everything this community has to offer. I have given myself the task to not only push Skyrim to its absolute graphical modding limits, but do it in a way that stays true to Skyrim's original vision, and create a graphical modding list that rivals even the most modern of AAA games. So how exactly do we plan on doing this? Well in this video I'm going to go over every single mod that I have used in order to give you an entire list you can even install for yourself. And as always the link to every single mod can be found in the description and I have written a full install guide on those mods over on my Patreon if you need a little more help in getting everything set up in the same way I have. But buckle in and get ready to see all the ways you can transform Skyrim into a visual masterpiece in 2024. To begin our visual overhaul, we're going to start with the most impactful changes, and that means of course starting with the weather and lighting across all aspects of your game. Skyrim is well known for its varied regions, each bearing their own take on the province's chilly climate, so for a general theme across this video I wanted to ensure that whatever weather and foliage mods I am using are going to feel like Skyrim and not stray too far from the original vision of the game. This meant ensuring forests felt bewitching. The nights were luminous and coloured. The snow felt boreal, bitter and brutal. And overall the province stuck to its Nordic themes, while heightening each of these regions to their utmost potential. And in order to achieve this, we'll start with our weather and EMB combination that has took the Skyrim modding community by storm in the past six months, in a way that not many other EMBs have managed to do. Cabbage EMB and Nat Weathers combine together for one of the most visually stunning synergies in a long time, enhancing Skyrim's graphical style with beautiful next-gen lighting. Not only does it genuinely make the shadow quality, volumetric lighting and reflections look immaculate, but it does so in a way that in my opinion stays about as true to Skyrim's intended climate as you can while also taking the liberty to enhance it to a modern standard. From the brisk northern mornings that make you appreciate the beauty of Skyrim's daytimes. The golden afternoons that shine across tranquil waterways. Or even the lunar nights that, that fill the sky with stars and moons alike. Not only does this EMB look fantastic outside, but paired with Lux, a mod to enhance interior lighting, there is nowhere in the game that will not benefit from this incredible combination of mods and thus lays out a foundation of lighting that will echo across all of the other mods soon to come in this video. When traversing Skyrim's captivating pine forests or its bitter snowfields, the grass and flora that inhabit those regions make up about 80% of the tone and visual fidelity. So of course, finding mods to perfect the alpine aspects of Skyrim's flora is incredibly important. Often some mods set out to make the grass in Whiterun green, or turn the rift into a willowing elven realm, and while those are cool, the goal of this video is to make Skyrim look like it was built today in 2024. So in order to do that, we'll start with the perfect mod for the job. Vadosbrom Regions is one of my favourite grass mods for Skyrim, and specialises in ensuring the grass around the province is created to each area's regional needs, really heightening the tone of every hold in Skyrim. 
For example, here is the vanilla grass in the rift compared to Vados Brom, which clearly inhabits the same feeling, but much more lush, less patchy, and overall just works fantastically for gameplay. Because we've all installed huge grass mods, which means you can never see an item if you drop it on the ground. On top of this, I've installed Cathedral's 3D pine grass, which affects only the pine forests of the province. Next up is the trees, and this time I've opted for Nature of the Wildlands. This mod completely transforms Skyrim's trees and forests into a version of what you'd expect each of these regions to be in real life, with large thin pines inhabiting its woodlands, snow-coloured leaves in its winter groves, and my favourite is the golden birches that really bring the entire of the rift to life in combination with Vadosprom regions. And with these grass and tree mods combined, you're in for one beautifully lush Skyrim. With recent advancements in complex parallaxing for ENB, good texture packs have become even more crucial in creating a beautiful and believable Skyrim. I always begin by installing Skyrim 2020X as a base to lay a foundation of great 4K textures across the game world, and ensures that when we add more specific textures to overwrite some of them, Skyrim 2020X has covered all of the other aspects in a big broad stroke. But on top of this mod, I have been using SRP's Additional Landscape Parallax, which is thus far the most visually impressive landscape texture mod. Not only is its art direction exactly in line with the style I'm aiming for with this list, but it utilises EMB's complex parallaxing feature to create three-dimensional models from textures themselves. On the left is the exact same texture, but without ENB enabled, showing you just how impressive this feature can truly be making an otherwise flat texture have depth and react to lighting. This complex parallaxing has been one of the most incredible advancements in Skyrim modding in the past year specifically, and it's amazing to see what mod authors are able to do when utilising it. But next we move on to the mountains, with Northfire's Majestic Mountains. This mod adds 8k textures for all the rocks and mountains across Skyrim, which may sound overboard, but when the texture is spread out over such a large object such as a mountain, 8k isn't really as bad and creates for one of the most stunning mountainscapes I've ever seen in all of gaming. But while the peaks of the region are important, so are the paths that intertwine the holes. Blended Roads is a texture and mesh overhaul to all Skyrim's roads, making them, well, blend better into the land around them. Vanilla roads are not horrible by any means, but these meshes are just far more versatile and blend nicer without landscape changes around them. And following the roads, we'll travel to Skyrim's capital city, which I always make sure I give a special shout out to. Solitude HD by Cleverchaff is still, and at this point likely always will be, my favourite Solitude texture overhaul. Its stone walls and wood textures just make the city feel so much warmer and coastal. It truly makes Solitude look like what I imagine its intended feeling was by Bethesda, but by also bringing it up to a modern quality, just like our next mod. Vivid Landscapes Complex Parallax Occlusion Snow has been, in my opinion, the most impressive display of the new Complex Parallax feature in recent time. Again, this is the same texture without, then with ENB, just showing you the difference this feature makes, creating truly fluffy and 3D snow across all of the game's snowy landscapes, of which you may have noticed Skyrim has many of. Textures make a huge difference in how our game appears, and with the mods we've just covered, your Skyrim is already looking better than most modern games. However, as it is with all of my lists, on top of your broad strokes of grass, trees and textures, you then have a bunch of smaller, individual mods that target very specific things that together really put the icing on the cake. In this segment, we're going to go over all of the mods that I always install after my big texture packs that can cover everything from retexturing all of Skyrim's armour sets to its individual architecture, all the way from wooden farmhouses up to steampunk Dwemer metals. Oh, and we're going to go through these pretty fast, so make sure you're paying attention. First is Pelter Palooza for parallax pelt textures, JS Rumpled Rugs, which also uses Rugnarok, SD's Vanilla Table Replacer, along with SD's Candlehorn Remesh and Texture, P Fusher's High Quality Sack Mod, Deadly spell impacts for parallax magic decals. For water, I'm using water for EMB, Shades of Skyrim, and JS Purses and Septums for all of your gold. Next is a series of locational mods created by WizKid, which create memorable and standout abandoned houses scattered throughout the world. And alongside this, I'm also using WizKid's parallax farmhouse texture, 
Whiskers ruined fort texture, his Riften and Ratway overhaul, and finally his Carriages mod. And lastly, DK's Nordic ships, and my favourite Mark R3 texture created by MRF. Next to some additional plant and armour replacers to add on top of your base texture packs. Beginning with a series of mods in the Cathedral 3D series, including Snowberries, Tundra Cotton, Thistle, Mountain Flowers, Dragon's Tongue, Death Bell, Nightshade, and Lavender and by far the most high quality vanilla friendly set of armour textures which aims to keep a consistent visual style throughout all of Skyrim's and Anniversary's armours. Next is Ark's Dragon Mask Redux which overhauls both the meshes and textures of all the Dragon Priest masks, Golden Dwemer Pipe Work reworked for Dwemer Ruins, Skyrim 3D Windmills, and finally both the High Pony Project which is a big pack of incredibly high detailed mesh and texture overhauls and pretty much all of Rally's individual mods to enhance the remaining clutter in the game. And together just really brings everything in harmony to fleshing out some of the overlooked parts not covered by our big texture packs. And in combination with everything else we have, I think this is one of the best graphical setups you can achieve in Skyrim right now. And as mentioned at the start of this video, I've put together a full install guide over on Patreon if you're interested and want some further help getting it all to work. But other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.